In what is a surprise to absolutely no one, NASA won't be sending astronauts to the lunar surface in 2024, blaming everyone but the kitchen sink for the delay. The space agency now intends to send a crew, including a woman and a person of color, to the moon in 2025. NASA has provided the first major update to its Artemis program under the Biden administration and is not what most would consider good news. Fortunately, we still have another major milestone to look forward to next month with the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope. Hello guys and welcome to Liftoff, your place where you can find everything space and often SpaceX. We are going to talk about NASA delaying the moon landing programs to 2025, putting the blame on Jeff Bezos' company Blue Origin. Let's not waste a second and move on with the video. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said returning to the moon as quickly and safely as possible is an agency priority. However, with the recent lawsuits and other factors, the first human landing under Artemis is likely no earlier than 2025, he added. NASA earlier this year awarded SpaceX a contract to develop a lunar lander for Artemis, the agency's spaceflight program tasked with returning humans to the moon. The selection didn't sit well with rival Blue Origin, who decided to sue NASA over the decision. Senior NASA officials on November the 9th provided an update timeline for returning humans to the moon under the agency's Artemis program, and they discussed costs and other issues related to it. The biggest news came in the form of NASA's formal acknowledgement that a human landing on the moon in 2024 is not possible, and there were plenty of other noteworthy tidbits. The briefing with space reporters, led by NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, came five days after the Court of Federal Claims ruled against Blue Origin's lawsuit against NASA for its selection of SpaceX to build a lunar lander for the Artemis program. Previously, Nelson had promised to provide an update on the Artemis program following the lawsuit, and on Tuesday, he made good on that. He came out guns blazing at Blue Origin. We've lost nearly seven months in litigation, and that likely has pushed the first human landing to no earlier than 2025, Nelson said, pinning the delay on NASA's return to the moon firmly on Blue Origin and its lawyers. During the legal process, NASA was forbidden from working or even talking with SpaceX regarding the human landing program. The agency was also unable to provide milestone payments. I spoke last Friday with Gwyn Shotwell, Nelson said, referring to the President and Chief Operating Officer of SpaceX. This was the first contact we've been able to have about the HLS program, and we both underscored the importance of returning to the moon as quickly and safely as possible. Later, he added, I want to give a shout out to our legal team. Artemis 2 and 3 Plans when the Trump administration created the Artemis program in spring 2019, Vice President Mike Pence set an aggressive goal of landing humans on the moon by 2024. Technically, this never seemed like it was really possible, but NASA has never formally acknowledged this and always set 2024 as an aspirational goal. But Nelson did not acknowledge the delay, citing that Blue Origin litigation lower than requested appropriations from Congress for landing development and the infeasibility of the 2024 date and time. It was proposed as reasons for a push until at least 2025. Before the Artemis 3 mission, which will take at least two astronauts to the lunar surface, NASA will now require not one, but two test flights. One of those flights will be an uncrewed landing by SpaceX's Starship vehicle to prove that the large vehicle can safely land on the moon and return to orbit. Nelson did not put a time frame on this mission. The second of these test flights is a long planned Artemis II mission. It will require a crew of four astronauts to lunar orbit and back, a mission with a similar flight profile to the Apollo 8 lunar flight in 1968 that preceded the first Apollo moon landing. Nelson said NASA will now seek to fly this mission no later than May 2024. For the Artemis II mission, astronauts will launch inside an Orion spacecraft atop the Space Launch System rocket. This will be the first human flight aboard the Orion spacecraft, a program NASA formally started in 2005. Moving the flight to 2024 represents a significant delay. At one time, NASA had planned to fly this mission under the name Exploration 2 in 2019. With ongoing delays, the price of Orion keeps going up. On Tuesday, Nelson announced a significant increase in the cost of Orion's development since 2012, when the spacecraft design was modified to its current configuration as a deep space capsule. 
NASA Deputy Administrator Pam Mulroy provided a fiscal update for Orion, saying the original baseline cost for the spacecraft was $6.7 billion, with the revised estimate now being $9.3 billion. That's a big jump. But she said many of the first-time development challenges on SLS and Orion are nearly behind us. Glad to look at alternatives. One clear takeaway from Tuesday's news conference is that NASA has now become tied to SpaceX for its Artemis moon program. In addition to the resolved court battle, Congress has also, however reluctantly, signed off on the agreement. Nominally for Artemis 3, NASA astronauts will launch in Orion atop a space launch system rocket. Then, they will rendezvous with Starship in lunar orbit, which will take astronauts down to the moon's surface for a few days, and then back to lunar orbit. There, the crew will scramble back into Orion and return to Earth. Without Starship, there are no humans on the moon. Intriguingly, SpaceX is actually building Starship to launch from the surface of the Earth, be refueled in low Earth orbit, and then fly to the moon or Mars before returning to Earth. Nelson was asked about potentially substituting SpaceX's Starship for Orion and the Space Launch System. Theoretically, Starship is reusable compared to the expendable SLS rocket, capable of a far higher flight rate and orders of magnitude less expensive. Let me point out right away that there's only one rocket that's capable of doing this, and this is SLS and Orion on top, Nelson replied. And that's stacked as we speak, and it's going to launch next February. So we're going with what we got. And if anybody comes up with another alternative, we're glad to look at any other alternatives. The Space Launch System rocket is indeed finally stacked, and it probably will launch during the first half of 2022. But SpaceX is also finalizing its Starship launch system, and pending launch site approval from the Federal Aviation Administration, it will attempt an orbital test flight early in 2022. The bottom line is that for Artemis to be a success, Starship must now also be a success. And if Starship is a success, it will most certainly be an exponentially more efficient launch vehicle than NASA's SLS rocket. Nelson may be glad to look at alternatives when they come to pass, but will Congress? While NASA is eager to return to the moon considering China's progress on the front, Nelson said that they are going to be as aggressive as what we can be, in a safe and technically feasible way, to beat our competitors with boots on the moon. And that concludes today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know your thoughts about the topic in the comment section down below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button, so that you will never miss any of SpaceX and space news. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.